Vega was a bit of a letdown. Power consumption is unreasonably high, and it doesn't justify it with any sort of comparable gaming performance. Even worse is the fact that with the proper settings, mining performance per watt can get really good. Vega prices are also inflated well beyond their relatively competitive MSRP, and not just because of miners draining stock. Vega supply at launch was already pretty low. It's very expensive to make, in no small part due to HBM2, so AMD is probably limiting production until that changes. HBM2 is a big culprit in Vega's pricing, but its selection was one of necessity. It's significantly more power efficient than GDDR5, which means that it can provide the same bandwidth at lower voltage. Vega with GDDR5, which at this point would take tremendous R&D and funding to change, would triple the memory's power requirement. So Radeon was basically forced to use HBM2 by nature of the GPU that they'd created. Created. But Samsung is currently the only manufacturer of high bandwidth memory, and since they don't make very much of it, it's very expensive. The 8 gigs on both the Vega 64 and the 56 make up for around $175 of the car's manufacturing cost. On top of that, just before Vega launched in August, worldwide memory prices surged by as much as 30%. Naturally, this immense hike in the manufacturing cost of their cards must have discouraged AMD from making a second round. The price drop I mentioned previously was regarding an expected arrival of HBM2 from memory supplier SK Hynix. A second supplier would hopefully introduce competition and allow AMD to purchase HBM2 from whichever company offered them the better deal, or order smaller amounts at lower cost from both of them. Unfortunately for AMD, Hynix is a bit behind schedule, and this clearly reflects in AMD's non-existent restocking schedule. NVIDIA hasn't been idle in their response to Vega. They've been silent, but that is in fact their response. If we look back to the spring of this year when Ryzen was huge news and AMD frankly looked unstoppable, NVIDIA released the 1080 Ti, a car that performed the same as their Titan for 60% of the price. This was seen by many as a safeguard against the unknown performance of the upcoming Vega. Now, NVIDIA has Volta technology finished and ready to go. This is actually accelerator technology for their Tesla cards, but Tesla technology itself trickles down and makes up the Quadro and GeForce lines. With Pascal, NVIDIA launched their accelerators in April of 2016. Then in May, they announced their GeForce line and they began selling weeks later. So Nvidia has Volta and could probably already be talking about Volta GeForce, but they have no reason to rush it as long as AMD doesn't have any competitive alternatives. When Pascal rolled out, AMD was riding on their very competitive Fury cards. This time around, AMD's best card, the Vega 64, is neck and neck and sometimes behind the GTX 1080, which is technically Nvidia's fourth best offering. So if Nvidia were to release Volta right now, the only product they would be competing with is their own and that does them no good. On the flip side, waiting to release Volta gives them more time to fine tune it and to have more control over the finished product. NVIDIA's president and CEO, Jensen Huang, even said, for the holiday season for the foreseeable future, I think Pascal is just unbeatable. It's just the best thing out there, and everybody who's looking forward to playing Call of Duty or Destiny 2, if they don't already have one, should run out and get themselves a Pascal. Without mentioning Vega, he clearly stated that Pascal just doesn't have any competition as far as being the best card right now. And his mention of the foreseeable future and the holiday season suggests that they're not even planning to announce Volta before the end of the year. <clears throat> That's it for this one. You know how the like, dislike, and subscribe buttons work, so go ahead and hit those and I'll see you in the next one.